Hey guys, welcome and servus from Vienna to this new episode of Simple Crypto. This week is a great week and it has started with the great news on Monday that Julian Assange has been set free. Julian Assange, one of my personal heroes, uh, because he is a fighter for freedom, a fighter for justice, uh, somebody who I see as an integral part of the whole crypto and Bitcoin movement. And in this video, I want to explain a bit how interconnected Julian and Bitcoin are and I want to also, uh, let's, uh, let's start the, the presentation for today. I want to also um, ask what his relation to Bitcoin is and does he know Satoshi Nakamoto or is he actually Satoshi himself? And uh, it's, it's not easy to answer this question, but there are certainly tracks, certainly there are hints on could he be Satoshi? So stick with me in this video and we will investigate this question together. So this story is about a cypherpunk, somebody fighting for the freedom of all of us. And this story is about him and Bitcoin. Let's uh, move into it. So the great things first, Julian is free after seven years in the embassy of Ecuador, uh, locked up basically because he couldn't leave. Uh, otherwise, he would have been put uh, into jail uh, and five years in prison in London after he was released from this embassy. Um, he could, uh, he's, he's a free man now. So today, this morning, he pled guilty in the court. So he said, it's my fault. I did something wrong. So it's good news for Julian, but it's very bad news for journalism because really um, it says that, uh, that yeah, journalism uh, cannot do what Julian did. However, he only told us, the normal people, the truth. He told us the truth about war crimes. He told us the truth about uh, what happens inside the deep state behind the scenes. And uh, yeah, we should, be, uh, we should be very concerned about this uh, for, from that perspective. But important to say here, we should also understand Julian that he did that because America offered him basically that uh, he can be a free man if he says I'm guilty and uh, the court will give him five years in prison. He already sat in prison for five years. So they said, uh, yeah, so that, that can be calculated this way, right? So it's, it's um, he already did his obligations in prison. So he is a free man from then on. And um, yeah, uh, good news for Julian. Very, very happy for him. Uh, greetings uh, to, to all the people who helped him over the years. Um, and yeah, I, I was, I was so happy when I read that. Uh, I, I don't even know, know how to, how to describe it. Um, I, I was following his story for all the years and I was so angry that this man who always wanted to do good had to be in prison for for being a good person for for helping that the truth um is is told right so yeah uh, julian the cypherpunk and then that's my slide here about julian the cypherpunk um, if you know cypherpunk movement, both Satoshi and uh, Julian Assange were cypherpunks. And it's a movement that started uh, in the 90s or was very, like, had a very strong time in the 90s and early 2000s. And um, when the internet was in its younger age, uh, they called for the battle for cyber, uh, for the cyberspace. And in his book, that he published uh, 2012 when he was already in the embassy in, in London, 
uh, locked up. He wrote this book about uh, freedom and the future of the internet. And there he called for this battle. Uh, is it e emancipation or is it slavery? And he certainly saw that the internet could offer tools for both. It can, it can offer tools for freedom, but it can also offer tools for control and for slavery. And uh, he's, he asked the question if Facebook and Google back then, obviously the biggest players on the field, um, if they were building the greatest civilians machine that ever existed, because they have so much data that they gather from people and that they can use to control, right? So he was uh, asking if this Orwellian dystopia with total control of location, contacts, and lives will happen. And... Um, this is, um, this is uh, so important because he, he said that one of the pieces to prevent this and one of the big pieces is actually cryptography because we don't have to show data publicly. We don't have to show all the data that we personally have to everybody if we use the right cryptography. And uh, he also says that no amount of violence can ever solve a math problem. Uh, and, and this is also super important because uh, Bitcoin cannot be controlled with violence. It's all that, uh, that mathematical um, concept behind Bitcoin that can only be solved by the rules of the protocol. And uh, I will later in this video, and as soon I will show you a video where he speaks in a bit more detail about exactly this. So Julian and Bitcoin and... Um, this is interesting because he saw very, very early um, what Bitcoin can do for society. He owned Bitcoin since it was less than ten dollars, and uh, yeah, I mean, he he was uh, kind of forced to go into Bitcoin by the banks. Uh, so yeah, uh, WikiLeaks considered taking donations in Bitcoin, and uh, but what what happened then is also surprising. Uh, what what not everybody would expect uh, happened then because uh, when he thought that um, that yeah he wants to take donations in Bitcoin and and uh, somebody in the in the Bitcoin talk forum where Satoshi was active said that uh, if they should get in contact with WikiLeaks because WikiLeaks is planning to get Bitcoin on as a donation form uh, as a form of, of holding their money. And Satoshi said, don't bring it on. He said, clearly, don't do that, uh, not WikiLeaks, because um, why, why did he do that? He didn't want to say that, that WikiLeaks is, is something bad. He said, or he was very concerned about uh, Bitcoin being too young and uh, too fragile at that point to get this big attention, to get this big attention from uh, from from a, a party like WikiLeaks in particular, because uh, the government of the United States and and also other governments were not happy with what WikiLeaks was uh, leaks was, uh, was been doing. So um, he he was afraid to get attention from the wrong side, and um, that that somebody could kill Bitcoin in these early days. And um, yeah, a few days later, as you see here, this was 11th of December 2010, and this was 5th, so it was not even a week later. Uh, there was an article actually uh, in the PC world about Bitcoin, and somebody there, some journalist actually has uh, gotten the information that WikiLeaks has uh, been planning to take donations in Bitcoin, and uh, that has kicked the hornet's nest, Satoshi says, and the swarm is headed towards us. So he was even more concerned uh, a few days later when that happened, and uh, he was certainly not happy. So, uh, But what WikiLeaks did is WikiLeaks did not accept Bitcoin until 2011, so it was half a year later, uh, roughly half a year after this, uh, this post by Satoshi, uh, WikiLeaks actually started to take donations on this address that you see here, uh, here uh, on the screen. So um, 
Yeah, and they did that because banks froze the money, uh, froze their money, and they uh, they kicked them out as customers. They said WikiLeaks doesn't get a bank account any longer, so they had to take Bitcoin. And later, the brother of Julian Assange actually stated that only with Bitcoin, WikiLeaks could survive. So without Bitcoin, it would have died. Uh, so yeah, that, that was very, very important for the story of WikiLeaks as well. Um, interestingly to say here, since 2011, as the address was published, WikiLeaks received over 4,000 Bitcoins and Julian and WikiLeaks certainly became Bitcoin whales. Uh, you see that here, the money was transferred out on, uh, interestingly, the 1st of January to, uh, 2022, uh, the money was transferred out of this wallet. And there is a new WikiLeaks wallet. I have found this information online. So if you want to donate, uh, they have a new public address where you can donate uh, Bitcoin to. So until today, they probably uh, they have gotten even more Bitcoin to their wallet. I, I read the information just before I did this video that... Uh, uh, one anonymous whale and and thank you to as well anonymous whale has uh, donated another eight bitcoin today uh, for Julian's uh, flight and for Julian getting to Australia. So uh, yeah, uh, there there certainly has come a bit more donations after this, but we can say that this is uh, valued uh, a quarter a quarter billion dollars what WikiLeaks got in Bitcoin donations. So um, very, very intertwined story that they have. And now we move on to this video. And this video is from uh, 2014. Uh, yeah, it's, it's very um, exciting to hear Julian speak about Bitcoin, to hear his thoughts. And he has an extremely deep understanding of bitcoin at this point 10 years ago it was long before you and me and most of us probably have even thought about bitcoin right so yeah so look at that now uh i will i will show it to you here uh, is bitcoin yes. right now the most interesting thing happening uh, is bitcoin uh it's probably the most interesting intellectual development on the internet in the last five years a lot of people will have heard about Bitcoin but not really understand it. So you think, okay, it's some online currency, what's the big deal? There's, you know, you can have a PayPal account, that's kind of like an online currency or even your Visa card. Well, actually all the, pro all the processing occurs online, isn't that really? Aren't no coiners still doing this? So no coiners are still comparing, I have my online account, I have my credit card, I have my PayPal. Uh, why do I need that? It's anyways digital, so uh, yeah. Uh, the, the same the same question still for people who haven't understood it, this question remains. But Julian goes on and uh, he says um, that this is not really online currency. And he mentions, and that is very interesting, he mentions actually a point which is which he sees as even more important than currency function of Bitcoin or the store of value function. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm kind of agreeing with him. This is this this archive function, but but let's see what he says. You like an online currency, or you can buy gold. That's kind of like an online currency. But Bitcoin is different because it is a currency that cryptographically backed, multi-jurisdictional, uh, which means that it's very hard for any one power group in any particular jurisdiction to start turning it into a rent-seeking apparatus. The underlying technology of Bitcoin is cryptography on the one hand and the ability for cryptography to create situations that can uh, defend them, defend itself or the people who use it against even the full might of a superpower. You know, a full might of a superpower doesn't help you smash a mass problem. A mass problem is a mass problem and it's something that is connected to the existence of intelligence in the universe or basic physics. It's not something you can get at simply through overwhelming coercive power or lots of people. And the other underlying basic technology is proof of publication at a particular time. And we've never really had that. In the digital world, we can delete history extremely easily. And history, even without an attempt to delete, it starts disappearing. Uh, this is what I meant. So he says that uh, 
history cannot be changed if we document it on the Bitcoin ledger uh, because it's immutable information that is staying there forever and uh, yeah, for all eternity. And uh, he's, he says that only this, something like Bitcoin, can actually prevent this dystopian world uh, that Orwell uh, drew already in his uh, famous book, uh, 1984. As a result of startup companies going under or particular bits of history not becoming profitable anymore. And that notion of being able to disappear history uh, entered into Orwell's writing. And you can look at what is, I think, his most substantive intellectual comment, which is he who controls the present controls the past, he who controls the past controls the future. And it's this notion that the past as an archive, as a history of our civilization, as a history of development, is in fact present right now in something physically contained in the library, in computer servers, in human beings' heads, that history doesn't exist except remnants that exist in the present. And so if you can get at these remnants, you can make particular inconvenient parts of history uh, disappear and amplify others. Bitcoin, in its underlying technology, breaks Orwell's dictum. It breaks Orwell's dictum by providing proof of publishing at a certain time. And that is the intellectual underpinning of that whole system and can be used for lots and lots of other things. And so that's the big expansion we're about to see uh, in Bitcoin, all derives from this basic premise that you can prove that a particular statement, a particular consensus, a particular contract happened at a particular time globally. And it requires a subversion of every single jurisdiction where people are running Bitcoin to overturn that. So seeing this, uh... I think I'm not the only one that gets really excited to hear what Julian has to say in the future on Bitcoin. I'm, I'm very hopeful that he could become also an advocate for, for us in the, in the blockchain and crypto space because he, uh, he certainly has the same vision and the same idea behind what he did, as I said before. So, but let's move on to this question that you have all been waiting for. Uh, does he know who Satoshi is? One thing we can say is that the short answer to this question is we will probably never know or never know with certainty whether he knew Satoshi or not. And also, if he is Satoshi, we cannot really say it. That's the short answer, right? But the long answer is a bit more complicated. Uh, what we know is that he and Satoshi were active in the cypherpunk scene and they were active at the same time. It wasn't a huge scene. So it was a movement of fighters for freedom and justice that wanted to keep the internet and uh, this new world that was emerging a free place. We know that Satoshi created Bitcoin for similar reasons, for a similar ideology, you could say, um, as Julian created WikiLeaks. Uh, both are active in this movement. And we also know that Julian actually was on a mailing list of these cypherpunks where they connected and shared ideas. And they also shared early drafts and discussions of Bitcoin in the beginning when Bitcoin started. So we know that Julian was involved in that or he was at least informed. Um, probably, and that we can say it was a very smart move by Satoshi to disappear because uh, yeah, who knows what, hap what could have happened to Satoshi. I would say that uh, if we knew who Satoshi was, we could have seen a story similar to Julian's. The U.S. government and, and other governments could have said Bitcoin was the enabler for making Silk Road happen, for example. We all know that Ross Ulbricht is sitting in jail as well. So, um, so yeah, Satoshi could have certainly faced a similar destiny as Julian. And for this reason, it was probably very smart for him, from him to disappear and to hide his identity and never dox who he was. So he was not attackable like Julian was in the end. So, yeah, but um, on the other hand, I think it's important to state that we will never know if Julian actually was Satoshi. Um, it's not certainly not impossible. Julian is one of those figures, those, these glamorous figures in the scene of cypherpunks that 
would have had both the capabilities and skills to create Bitcoin and to also hide his identity successfully. Potentially, the post by Satoshi on to not onboard WikiLeaks as an early user was just a false track. Maybe Julian just wanted us all to believe that Satoshi is opposed WikiLeaks and therefore uh, he couldn't be the same person, right? Um, we, we don't know that. But um, one thing that is also very interesting for me is that uh, the disappearance of Satoshi coincides very much with the time when things around WikiLeaks got extremely hot. The times when the first allegations against, um, against um, Julian were there and where they started to uh, attack him from several sides. And it was a time when Satoshi said um, that I've moved on to other things. Uh, Bitcoin is in good hands. And I mean, what if Satoshi actually meant that he is now um, fighting for truth in journalism? Maybe he said that I don't have the time for Bitcoin any longer because I have to deal with so much shit that's going on there. And uh, yeah, the other things could have certainly been WikiLeaks. Uh, but yeah, uh, just dubious speculations at this point, right? Because uh, we cannot really say uh, that Julian uh, is is not Satoshi, but we can also not prove that he is Satoshi, and he will probably never tell us. But uh, yeah, uh, that's that's basically the end of the story of him being Satoshi. One more thing I have to say, and I want to say, uh, congratulations, Julian, on keeping fight, keeping this fight on, and uh, also he made and congratulations to that. He and WikiLeaks made. 50,000% returns on their Bitcoin because the US government didn't allow them to have bank accounts any longer. And that's a great, great uh, side story here. So uh, congratulations on making so much money. If you have seen this video and you enjoyed this, please uh, leave a like and subscribe to my channel to see more videos in the future. And let me know in the comments below, do you think that uh, Julian and Satoshi are the same person? Do you believe that they knew each other or that they were aware of who the other person was? Uh, I'm, I would be interested in, in what you think of this. This being said, until next time, I wish you a wonderful rest of the day and all the best, your Alex.